Okay, welcome. Information theory. This is the first of a two-quarter sequence. Uh, the first quarter, uh, we'll go through the entire uh, book, uh, the textbook for the course. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the information questionnaire that's being uh, circulated. Here, you can have this one. Great. So, um, well, first, uh, let's take care of some uh, course organization. Uh, there'll be two TAs for the course, uh, Gotham Kumar, who's here, and we'll be announcing his office hours uh, soon on the web page. There's a web page for the course. I have announced my office hours. It's Tuesdays, 4 to 5 p.m. Tuesday, 4 to 5 p.m., office hours for Gotham Kumar. And uh, Lei Zhao is also a TA for the course. We'll announce his office hours. Um, let's see, the web page is on the uh, uh, course announcements. Uh, which is handout number one, I believe. Yeah. And uh, handout number three are reference uh, books, reference text for the course. Shannon's original, for, for example. There are probably 200... But many are listed in the uh, back of the uh, text for the course. Text for the course is uh, by Colby Thomas. It's uh, Elements of Information Theory. Uh, we plan to go through the whole book uh, in this in these two quarters. Now, a couple of things I'd like you to know. Uh, one is. Uh, auditors. Auditors are welcome. People who just come to class and want to listen. And if you're an auditor, you're invited to ask questions, interrupt, and play a role just as if you're a student. Uh, also, uh, questions are very welcome. Look, there's one overriding question in this course. What is information? There's a mathematical answer. Uh, uh, information is a satisfying answer. It, it's, it's the same notion to several different questions and thereby uh, uh, gain status as the definition of information. And then there's a physical notion of information. And that is continually evolving. For example, and uh, physics, uh, if you throw a cow into a black hole or a dictionary into a black hole, they both add to the mass of the black hole and it seems like information is lost. That is the distinction between the cow and the dictionary. Well, uh, current thinking is the information is not lost. It's preserved on the event horizon and it's radiated out over the next 10 billion years. And uh, so although the information is there, it is it has become unusable, which is an interesting distinction. So yes, theoretically you can recover from the radiation of a black hole, the fact that a cow went in instead of a dictionary. Um, but it's so um, microscopic over such a long period, 10 billion years, uh, that the information has become unusable. Uh, those who've looked at thermodynamics see that there's a similar situation uh, in um, the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy, which is a concept that will be a core idea for us in this course, 
entropy in physics is supposed to be something that increases. Chaos increases in the universe. Things degenerate. Yet the laws of physics are symmetric in time. So apparently uh, no information is lost uh, or in the, in the case of thermodynamics energy is conserved like information uh, but when you say put a hot gas and a cold gas together uh, it becomes lukewarm gas so the kinetic energy is the same but now it is not macroscopically uh, separated. It's microscopically separated and becomes useless. So you see the parallel. In, the, in thermodynamics, energy is conserved, but it becomes useless. And in information theory, we might say, say that the physical information is preserved, but it becomes useless. So we'll, that's one of the questions that's hovering around this subject that we'll touch on from time to time. These are the things that give us energy, that keep us from knowing, thinking that this subject is, is complete or satisfactorily uh, uh, fulfilled. In any case, that's what gives me energy. Right, now, when you ask questions, I just interrupt to say question, and then ask the question. I, as I say, I welcome them. But you have to speak up, because I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> And so I'll say what until we get the dialogue going. So hopefully that won't be a barrier, but I do want uh, questions, especially questions like, what is it? Uh, uh, that sort of question is the kind that I like. All right. I have something to say about grading and homework. Uh, this is your midterm score, and this is your final score. And then there's the homework score. Now we're in transition, and have been for many years now, where if you go to the internet, you can find things about, you know, solutions to past homeworks and that sort of thing. Probably not all of the problems, but, you know, depends on how hard you wish to look. Uh, so definitely on the homework, try to preserve your... <laughs> have, have the discipline to try to solve the problem yourself, even if you somehow have got the solution in front of you. Uh, I mean, we do it with crosswords and everything all the time anyway, so do that. Now, the homework will be 10 points a problem. We'll grade it rather loosely, like have you done it? Do you have the right answer? And so on. And not extremely interactively. Uh, because we'll be putting a lot of effort into the solutions that we'll hand out uh, when we hand the homeworks back. So it'll be 10 points of problem. Uh, and you will then get a score on the homework. Now I'd like to say that homework doesn't count. Of course it counts the most in trying to un understand the subject. So here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to look at this, account for the fact that the final's roughly twice as long as the midterm, 
and uh, put down parallel hyperplanes here. 